The shallow water equations are a set of hyperbolic partial differential equations or parabolic if viscous shear is considered that describe the flow below a pressure surface in a fluid sometimes, but not necessarily, a free surface. The shallow water equations in unidirectional form are also called saint venant equations, after Ademar Jean-Claude Barré de saint venant see the related section below. The equations are derived from depth integrating the Navier-Stokes equations, in the case where the horizontal length scale is much greater than the vertical length scale. Under this condition, conservation of mass implies that the vertical velocity scale of the fluid is small compared to the horizontal velocity scale. It can be shown from the momentum equation that vertical pressure gradients are nearly hydrostatic, and that horizontal pressure gradients are due to the displacement of the pressure surface, implying that the horizontal velocity field is constant throughout the depth of the fluid. Vertically integrating allows the vertical velocity to be removed from the equations. The shallow water equations are thus derived. While a vertical velocity term is not present in the shallow water equations, note that this velocity is not necessarily zero. This is an important distinction because, for example, the vertical velocity cannot be zero when the floor changes depth, and thus if it were zero only flat floors would be usable with the shallow water equations. Once a solution i.e. the horizontal velocities and free surface displacement has been found, the vertical velocity can be recovered via the continuity equation. Situations in fluid dynamics where the horizontal length scale is much greater than the vertical length scale are common, so the shallow water equations are widely applicable. They are used with Coriolis forces in atmospheric and oceanic modeling, as a simplification of the primitive equations of atmospheric flow. Shallow water equation models have only one vertical level, so they cannot directly encompass any factor that varies with height. However, in cases where the mean state is sufficiently simple, the vertical variations can be separated from the horizontal and several sets of shallow water equations can describe the state. Topic. Equations Topic. Conservative form The shallow water equations are derived from equations of conservation of mass and conservation of linear momentum the Navier-Stokes equations, which hold even when the assumptions of shallow water break down, such as across a hydraulic jump. In the case of a horizontal bed, no Coriolis forces, frictional or viscous forces, the shallow water equations are rho eta t plus rho eta u x plus rho eta v y equals Zero Rho Eta U T plus X Rho Eta U two plus one two Rho G Eta two plus Rho eta U V Y equals zero Rho eta V T plus Rho eta U V X plus Y Rho eta v two plus one two rho g eta two equals zero. 
display style begin aligned frac partial row eta partial t and plus frac partial row eta u partial x plus frac partial row eta v partial y equals zero three p t frac partial row eta u partial t and plus frac partial partial x left row eta u carrot two plus frac one two row g eta carrot two right plus frac partial row eta u v partial y equals zero three p t frac partial row eta v partial t and plus frac partial row eta u v partial x plus frac partial partial y left row eta v carrot two plus frac one two row g eta carrot two right equals zero end aligned here eta is the total fluid column height instantaneous fluid depth as a function of x y and t and the 2d vector u v is the fluid's horizontal flow velocity averaged across the vertical column further g is acceleration due to gravity and rho is the fluid density the first equation is derived from mass conservation the second two from momentum conservation topic non-conservative form Expanding the derivatives in the above using the product rule, the non-conservative form of the shallow water equations is obtained. Since velocities are not subject to a fundamental conservation equation, the non-conservative forms do not hold across a shock or hydraulic jump. Also included are the appropriate terms for Coriolis, frictional and viscous forces, to obtain for constant fluid density H T plus x h plus h u plus y h plus h v equals 0 u t plus u u x plus V U Y minus F V equals minus G H X minus B U plus new two U X Two plus two U Y two V T plus U V X plus V V Y plus F U equals minus G H Y minus B V plus new two V X two plus 2 v y 2 display style begin aligned frac partial h partial t and plus frac partial partial x biggle h plus h u bigger plus frac partial partial y biggle h plus h v bigger equals 0 3 p t frac partial u partial t and plus u frac partial u partial x plus v frac partial u partial y f v equals g frac partial h partial x b u plus new Left frac partial carrot two U partial x carrot two plus frac partial carrot two U partial y carrot two right three P T frac partial V partial T and plus U frac partial V partial x plus V frac partial V partial y plus foo equals G frac partial H partial Y B V plus new left frac partial carrot two V partial x carrot two plus frac partial carrot two V partial 
partial y caret 2 right end aligned where it is often the case that the terms quadratic in u and v which represent the effect of bulk advection are small compared to the other terms this is called geostrophic balance and is equivalent to saying that the rossby number is small Assuming also that the wave height is very small compared to the mean height HH, we have without lateral viscous forces H T plus H U X plus V Y equals zero U T minus F V equals minus G H X minus B U V T plus F U equals minus G H Y minus B V Display style begin aligned frac partial h partial t and plus h left frac partial u partial x plus frac partial v partial y right equals zero three p t frac partial u partial t and f v equals g frac partial h partial x b u three p t frac partial v partial t and plus foo equals g frac partial h partial y b v end aligned Topic: One-dimensional Saint Venant equations. The one-dimensional 1D Saint Venant equations were derived by Ademar Jean-Claude Barré de Saint Venant and are commonly used to model transient open channel flow and surface runoff. They can be viewed as a contraction of the two-dimensional 2D shallow water equations, which are also known as the two-dimensional Saint Venant equations. The 1D St. Venant equations contain to a certain extent the main characteristics of the channel cross-sectional shape. The 1D equations are used extensively in computer models such as Masquerite EDF, SIC Erstia, HEC RAS, SWMM5, ISIS, InfoWorks, Flood Modeler, Sobek 1D Flow, Mike 11, and MikeShe because they are significantly easier to solve than the full shallow water equations. Common applications of the 1D St. Venant equations include flood routing along rivers including evaluation of measures to reduce the risks of flooding, dam break analysis, storm pulses in an open channel, as well as storm runoff in overland flow. Topic equations The system of partial differential equations which describe the 1D incompressible flow in an open channel of arbitrary cross-section, as derived and posed by St. Venant in his 1871 paper equations 19 and 20 is, where x is the space coordinate along the channel axis, t denotes time, a x, t is the cross-sectional area of the flow at location x, u x, t is the flow velocity, zeta x, t is the free surface element elevation and tau x, t is the wall shear stress along the wetted perimeter p x, t of the cross-section at x. Further rho is the constant fluid density and g is the gravitational acceleration. Closure of the hyperbolic system of equations 1, 2 is obtained from the geometry of cross-sections, by providing a functional relationship between the cross-sectional area and the surface elevation z at each position x. For example, for a rectangular cross-section, with constant channel width b and channel bed elevation zb, the cross-sectional area is, a b zeta minus zb bh the instantaneous water depth is h x t equals zeta x t minus z b x with z b x the bed level, i.e. elevation of the lowest point in the bed above datum. See the cross section figure. For non-moving channel walls, the cross sectional area in equation one can be written as a x t equals zero h x T B X H D H 
display style a x t equals int underscore zero carrot h x t b x h m box d h with b x h the effective width of the channel cross section at location x when the fluid depth is h so b x h equals b x for rectangular channels the wall shear stress tau is dependent on the flow velocity u they can be related by using eg the darcy weisbach equation manning formula or shazy formula Further, equation 1 is the continuity equation, expressing conservation of water volume for this incompressible homogeneous fluid. Equation 2 is the momentum equation, giving the balance between forces and momentum change rates. The bed slope S x, friction slope S f x t, and hydraulic radius R x t are defined as S equals minus D Z B D X display style S equals frac mathrm D Z underscore mathrm B mathrm D X S F equals tau rho G R display style S underscore mathrm F equals frac tau rho G R and R equals A P display style R equals frac A P. Consequently, the momentum equation two can be written as topic conservation of momentum. The momentum equation 3 can also be cast in the so-called conservation form through some algebraic manipulations on the St. Venant equations 1 and 3 in terms of the discharge Q equals O where A I1 and I2 are functions of the channel geometry described in the terms of the channel width B sigma x here sigma is the height above the lowest point in the cross section at location x see the cross section figure so sigma is the height above the bed level zb x of the lowest point in the cross section a sigma x equals 0 sigma b sigma x d sigma i 1 sigma x equals zero sigma sigma minus sigma b sigma x d sigma and I two sigma x equals zero sigma sigma minus sigma b sigma x x d sigma Display style begin aligned a sigma x and equals int underscore zero carrot sigma b sigma carrot prime x mathrm d sigma carrot prime i underscore one sigma x and equals int underscore zero carrot sigma 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 carrot prime b sigma carrot prime x mathrm d sigma carrot prime q quad text and i underscore two sigma x and equals int underscore score 0 carrot sigma 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 carrot prime frac partial b sigma carrot prime x partial x mathrm d sigma carrot prime end aligned above in the momentum equation 4 in conservation form a i1 and i2 are evaluated at sigma equals h x t the term gi1 describes the hydrostatic force in a certain cross section and for a non-prismatic channel gi2 gives the effects of geometry variations along the channel axis x in applications depending on the problem at hand there often is a preference for using either the momentum equation in non-conservation form 2 or 3 or the conservation form 4 for instance in case of the description of hydraulic jumps, the conservation form is preferred since the momentum flux is continuous across the jump. Topic characteristics The St. Venant equations 1, 2 can be analyzed using the method of characteristics. 
The two celerities dx, dt on the characteristic curves are, dx dt equals u plus or minus c, display style frac mathrm dx mathrm dt equals u pmc, with c equals gab. Display style c equals sqrt frac gar b, the Froude number f equals u, c determines whether the flow is subcritical f1. For a rectangular and prismatic channel of constant width b, i.e., with a topic b h and c square root g h, the Riemann invariants are r plus equals u plus two g h display style r underscore plus equals u plus two sqrt g h and r minus equals u minus two g h display style r underscore equals u two sqrt g h so the equations in characteristic form are d d t u plus 2 g h equals g s minus s f along d x d t equals U plus G H and D D T U minus two grams H equals G S minus S F along D X D T equals U minus G H display style begin aligned and frac mathrm D mathrm D T left U plus two S Q R T G H right equals G left S S underscore F right and and text along quad frac mathrm D X mathrm D T equals U plus S Q R T G H quad text and and, and frac mathrm d mathrm d t left u two s q r t g h right equals g left s s underscore f right and and text along quad frac mathrm d x mathrm d t equals u s q r t g h end aligned the Riemann invariance and method of characteristics for a prismatic channel of arbitrary cross section are described by Didenkolova and Pelinovsky 2011 the characteristics and Riemann invariance variants provide important information on the behavior of the flow, as well as that they may be used in the process of obtaining analytical or numerical solutions. <laughs> <laughs> Derived modeling <laughs> Dynamic wave The dynamic wave is the full one-dimensional St. Venant equation. It is numerically challenging to solve, but is valid for all channel flow scenarios. The dynamic wave is used for modeling transient storms in modeling programs including Masquerit EDF, SIC, Erstia, HEC RAS, Infoworks underscore ICM, Mike 11, WASH 123D and SWMM5. In the order of increasing simplifications, by removing some terms of the full 1D St. Venant equations, aka dynamic wave equation, we get the also classical diffusive wave equation and kinematic wave equation. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Diffusive wave. For the diffusive wave it is assumed that the inertial terms are less than the gravity, friction, and pressure terms. The diffusive wave can therefore be more accurately described as a non-inertia wave, and is written as g h x plus g s f minus s equals 0 display style g frac partial h partial x plus g s underscore fs equals 0 
The diffusive wave is valid when the inertial acceleration is much smaller than all other forms of acceleration, or in other words when there is primarily subcritical flow, with low Froude values. Models that use the diffusive wave assumption include Mike Shi and LISFLOODFP. In the SIC software this options is also available, since the two inertia terms or any of them can be removed in option from the interface. Topic. Kinematic wave For the kinematic wave it is assumed that the flow is uniform, and that the friction slope is approximately equal to the slope of the channel. This simplifies the full St. Venant equation to the kinematic wave S F minus S equals 0 display style s underscore f s equals 0 the kinematic wave is valid when the change in wave height over distance and velocity over distance and time is negligible relative to the bed slope e.g. for shallow flows over steep slopes the kinematic wave is used in hec hms topic <laughs> derivation from navier stokes equations The 1d St. Venant momentum equation can be derived from the Navier-Stokes equations that describe fluid motion. The x component of the Navier-Stokes equations, when expressed in Cartesian coordinates in the x direction, can be written as u t plus u u x plus v u y plus w u z equals minus p x 1 row plus new 2 u x 2 plus 2 U Y two plus two U Z two plus F X Display style frac partial U partial T plus U frac partial U partial X plus V frac partial U partial Y plus W frac partial U partial Z equals frac partial P partial X frac one row plus new left frac partial carrot two U partial X carrot two plus frac partial carrot two U partial Y carrot two plus frac partial carrot two U partial Z carrot two right plus F underscore x, where u is the velocity in the x direction, v is the velocity in the y direction, w is the velocity in the z direction, t is time, p is the pressure, rho is the density of water, nu is the kinematic viscosity, and fx is the body force in the x direction. Terms the local acceleration a can also be thought of as the unsteady term, as this describes some change in velocity over time. The convective acceleration B is an acceleration caused by some change in velocity over position, for example the speeding up or slowing down of a fluid entering a constriction or an opening, respectively. Both these terms make up the inertia terms of the one-dimensional St. Venant equation. The pressure gradient term C describes how pressure changes with position, and since the pressure is assumed hydrostatic, this is the change in head over position. The friction term D accounts for losses in energy due to friction, while the gravity term E is the acceleration due to bed slope. Topic: <laughs> Wave modeling by shallow water equations. Shallow water equations can be used to model Rossby and Kelvin waves in the atmosphere, rivers, lakes and oceans as well as gravity waves in a smaller domain e.g. surface waves in a bath. 
In order for shallow water equations to be valid, the wavelength of the phenomenon they are supposed to model has to be much larger than the depth of the basin where the phenomenon takes place. Somewhat smaller wavelengths can be handled by extending the shallow water equations using the Boussinesq approximation to incorporate dispersion effects. Shallow water equations are especially suitable to model tides which have very large length scales over hundred of kilometers. For tidal motion, even a very deep ocean may be considered as shallow as its depth will always be much smaller than the tidal wavelength. Topic: <inaudible> Turbulence modeling using nonlinear shallow water equations. Shallow water equations, in its nonlinear form, is an obvious candidate for modeling turbulence in the atmosphere and oceans, i.e. geophysical turbulence. An advantage of this, over quasi-geostrophic equations, is that it allows solutions like gravity waves, while also conserving energy and potential vorticity. However there are also some disadvantages as far as geophysical applications are concerned, it has a non-quadratic expression for total energy and a tendency for waves to become shock waves. Some alternate models have been proposed which prevent shock formation. One alternative is to modify the pressure term in the momentum equation, but it results in a complicated expression for kinetic energy. Another option is to modify the nonlinear terms in all equations, which gives a quadratic expression for kinetic energy, avoids shock formation, but conserves only linearized potential vorticity. Topic Notes Topic Further reading Topic. External links Derivation of the shallow water equations from first principles instead of simplifying the Navier-Stokes equations, some analytical solutions.